Uh, yeah, I could talk to you about uh, the Maya situation. Um, we met Maya. We were in uh, the Mondrian in Los Angeles. I forgot what she was doing. It was a promotional thing for her. She was Maya was just coming out with her first album. It was like '98. Um, I think at this time, either Kel was just finished with Nickelodeon and doing his own thing. Nick Cannon was coming into his own around this time, and things were starting to change around that time. So, um, Nick was com coming up into prominence, and Maya was getting ready to start her career, and it was the age of the new, the new blood. She was, you know, per se. But Maya had, um, you know, this stigma in the business where people were just spreading these rumors about her constantly throughout, you know. Everybody was like, man, you see Maya? Yeah, she's this and that. And she wanted people to listen to her music. And she was very young. Um, it was the young baby boomers coming in there, the bloomers that were coming into the picture. You had your Monica's, you had the Brandy's. Now you got Maya coming through the door and Christina Milian came right behind her. So the problem ensued is they tried to, the industry that she was with, first off, she was signed with Interscope and what they wanted to do was transition her into being a pop act and make the songs that they wanted to make. And she felt like, okay, let's let's make this record here. Let's get this out here. The people will want to see it. This should be where I'm turning, right? Well, maybe this isn't it. I thought it would, but maybe not. But anyway, going right into it, uh, people were all jumping down my throat about the Maya situation because people was like, man, you don't ever tell us what happened, what happened to Maya's career, and was she really a hoe? And I'm like, Maya is one of the hardest working people we met. Like, they were in the studio working constantly her her team her father by our side maya is a hard worker she was never the type of person that followed everybody else's lead you know she was basically like look this is the way it is and that's she's straight up and down once you get to meet her now at first when you meet her you might be thrown back like oh she kind of stuck up but she's not and she wasn't a princess she just you know, everybody got egos and they full of games and yo baby, I'm the man type stuff. And most women don't, you know, they react different to that. They not caught up in the spotlight. Like, oh my God, he's such a star. And not even, they not in it for that. So when you see that start to develop, you say, whoa, okay, what do we got going on here? And for instance, Maya the Jay-Z situation. I'm quite sure you heard that before. So when Maya and Jay-Z came to the forefront, you started to hear about their situation, about their relationship, and there wasn't any. Jay came to do the song, the remix for her song, and he didn't like her attitude, so he decided to leave because she wasn't kissing his butt. And there's been plenty of people came in there trying to get up with Maya. And she'd just be like, whatever. That was just her attitude back then. So, it is what it is. But she was always straight up and down as far as anything we know. You know, like for her to be, she was always straight up and down. So, I didn't see any portrayal or any of the stuff that other people were talking about her being stuck up. It's just that the record company where the industry had changed. They were bringing in 
Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera at that time. So when you got Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears getting all of the buzz for making all these pop songs. So Maya decided I got a song that's like right in that area. I'll put that out because this is what the music is, you know, gravitating to. Interscope didn't want to change that. Why? Because they wanted more of the artists that, that were African-American to start dressing like sluts. And once that started happening, it changed the industry around. And where she said, no, Maya, like, F you, I'm not doing that. They put her on the, they just didn't promote her records and pushed her to the side. She had two platinum albums, but that didn't even matter. Push her to the side. We don't really care what she got. Let's move forward with what we doing. We got a good thing going right here. So why do we need her? You know, it's one of those type of situations. So, where she said no, Christina, Christina Million said, yeah. She just didn't have the songs. And no matter what songs they gave her, no matter what producer they gave her, it just never took off her. And she played ball. She did everything they asked. She dressed in almost nothing in her videos. And it was just like, this is ridiculous. But a lot of people just didn't gravitate to her. She had the look. She had everything. They even threw her in a movie. I mean, but Maya's been doing her thing. But she's remained being Maya. She didn't compromise herself. And that's something young artists and young females need to understand that, that while they were transitioning R&B into pop and making everybody sex symbols, this was the process that was going on at the time. And Maya was the one that stood up against all these different things. Now, she performed her song in sex, you know, strip clubs because she wanted to see how, you know, how that people would react. But the record company and the labels were out to get her so they would put out these false stories um about how she was oh she's performing in strip clubs now she's reduced to performing and just to make the public believe that's how far she's fallen you know and it's a sad narrative when you look at it in totality then uh oh then you look at um the situation with 50 cent in the game the game was actually dating her like you know, after her massive breakup with a guy, you know, her and the game started dating. And the game was going at it with 50, and 50 told on the song said he hit it first. Why? Because it's psychologically damaging, no matter if it's true or not, it's psychologically damaging to, to the game for him to say that. So that's all that point was. So I just wanted to give you guys some insight on that. I'm going to get out of here because I got to go. I'm actually late for my appointment. I'm out.